Fnatic is really about being the number one, and obviously we'd like to take that further and be classified as one of the greatest League of Legends teams of all time. We want to be the kings of Europe and remain at that top, but for us it's also about being cheeky, being fun, and not actually, you know, being about the lifestyle of esports, which is super interesting and fun for everyone involved. So we have three pillars to that. That's the experiences as we call it, the content we might create, and the products we create. So we're here to be the most representative brand for esports enthusiasts globally. We're obviously investing in this for the long run, and we think that there's gonna be growth and that's gonna come from a, you know, more intense fandom and more sort of strong bonds and loyalty being built. We, you know, we welcome new competitors that can come in and help create those bonds as well and really grow a bigger fan base for the whole sport. We're seeing viewership grow largely because of that stability, largely because you're, you're having these narratives being built around these long, stable brands over the course of the last sort of eight years, which is, is something that people can get behind. And there's hand-me-downs, you know, you tell your girlfriend, you tell your, your, your brother or whatever, let's go watch my favorite team play League of Legends. We really have one motto when it comes to fan engagement, it's that it should always be better to be a fanatic fan. And so that means that we're always looking at ways in which we can give back, you know, that's an esports bar in Madrid during the World Finals, that's a pop-up shop in Busan. They are what make us a, a company and, and, and something that is, is really representative. So without the fans, we're nothing, and, and, that, and that's why, you know, we're always going to be giving back.